Hi everybody, and welcome to Moscow, and welcome to Travelling with Russell. That's me! And today, I thought I'd take you for a walk around a very well-known historical landmark here in Moscow. It's right behind me. It's Danilovsky Market. Now first, I thought I'd just show you something interesting in the nearby buildings, because I think it's rather unique to Moscow and Russia. Let's go. Where we'll eventually go in a few minutes is just across the street here. This is Danilovsky Rynok, or Danilovsky Market. However, just off to the left here, if you excuse all the traffic at the lights, is this a very interesting, very big apartment building. And just have a look at how long it is. Now, this is very untypical for Russia and the design of it and the sheer size of it is just incredible and it's just so russian looking it's not beautiful to some people but it is to others and the fact that you're by this very busy highway isn't ideal but you are next to the metro station which you can see the underpass right here there's also another couple more shopping centers if the market isn't enough, there's one on the left there, there's one straight ahead. And then this very unique apartment building. It's just huge. Now, I was trying to look up how many entrances it has, but I can't find that reference online. So if anybody knows how many physical entrances it has, let me know in the comments as the traffic lights come to a stop. There is a Belarusian truck parked right in front of where I want to look at this building right here. But it's very unique. And I think most people, maybe even who live in Moscow, don't come to this area too often to see it. And I think it's just very typical Russian Soviet design and look. And we're gonna head on over to the market now and get to the real reason behind making this video. Passing under the highway is really neat in some of these different parts of Moscow. They've got little shops underneath. Now this one only has a few of them open, depending on where you are. There's some that have got whole rows of shops and some that just have a couple open. And you've got glasses here. You can get a phone case. You can buy some new socks. And then I think there's a vegetable seller here or some fruit at least. They've got mandarins because we're coming into winter time now. These are the most popular fruit of the season. They also have some dried fruit and nuts as well. Looking back at the apartment building from the other side of the street, the only thing that spoils it, they put a very big advertising banner on there. However, a lot of people call these caterpillar buildings because of these concrete legs that extend the lower floors of the building. Now, in this particular apartment building, it's all commercial businesses on the lower floors and then the apartments on the upper floors. And if you can imagine a whole lot of caterpillar legs going the whole length of the building, it makes sense why they call it that. Not sure if you can just see off in the background there. I was just stopped by a channel subscriber. He was going for a walk with his young baby. And it was so nice to have a little chat just for a few minutes. If you do see me out and about in Moscow, please stop me. Please say hello and thanks for the chat. <laughs> this is the building we want to go inside, Danilovsky Market. And I think for a lot of people who are from Moscow generally, they know it very well. It's rather famous. It's been here since the 12th century. However, most of the writings about this building say that it's been here since 1960. But it was named in honor of the Daniel Monastery, which is just behind us. Actually, if I swing around just slowly, there is a little bit of it just here. And then the main part is off in the distance just behind the truck right there, the Daniel Monastery. They already have one of their holiday trees up. And if you come here in summertime, they actually have an outdoor part of this market as well. And they have some tables and chairs where you can actually eat out on this decking here. 
The actual place is open every day from 8 a.m. till 9 p.m. I'm a little bit confused by some of the do's and don'ts. However, they're fairly normal when you read them. And this is Danilovsky Runic. Actually, one of the more famous things about the building is this roof and this structure that they built over the entire market. Now, we will actually walk around the different food stalls and I have a little bit of a surprise coming up for you as well, which might be interesting to stick around to watch. But have a look at this roof and then this glass dome in the very center. Now, it's not letting a lot of light in today because it's quite overcast here. But the same architect and designer of this roof also did the design of Luzhniki Stadium, which is probably more famous as the largest sporting stadium in Russia, and also the place where they had the World Cup final in 2018. And also they've used it for the Olympics back in 1980. It's a pretty impressive structure, this leaf design as they call it as you look around at the top it's looks like plastic almost but it's absolutely solid concrete and steel but it's definitely impressive the actual market itself is one big circular walkway and on this outside ring is different food cafes and that's a little bit of a hint of what i'm going to do later on in the video and there is all sorts of food from everywhere possible far beyond Russia and all sorts of different snacks and pastries and cakes and then this inside ring there's actually two of them has lots of different food stalls and this is perhaps the more recognized part of this market originally because it was a food rinnock and all of the different food vendors and all of the different types of seasonal fruits and vegetables that perhaps aren't necessarily available right now somewhere else in the world. But here in Russia, you can buy things literally year round. And everything always looks so beautiful when you come here. Now, where I live, I'm about 50 kilometers outside of Moscow. And we also have a rinnock or market. I will actually put a card to that place if you want to have a look at the local one where I live. And it's not too different from this. However, perhaps the building's not as beautiful. But the selection of food is equal or the same. Just the fact that we're quite a bit closer to the center of Moscow. Perhaps people think it's better and more impressive. They've also got quite a lot of different fish vendors here as well. And you'll actually see the different ladies waiting for their customers. There is plenty of caviar available. And there's also some smoked fish as well. And even black caviar as well. Not quite from the Moscow River, but from somewhere much further east than where we are right now. There is so much beautiful fish products here and a lot of people will come here to this market solely for the selection and the amount of choices that are perhaps not in every market in Moscow. In the one where I live we have only I think two different fish vendors. Then you come here and there's dozens of them. Now I'll try to walk around with as few cuts as possible. Look how beautiful the strawberries look. They look absolutely amazing. There is also a meat market as well. Now I am here on a Tuesday afternoon. This is definitely a working day in Moscow. So there is a few shoppers here, but it's probably not as busy as it would be later in the evening particularly after work for most people. Not everyone's gonna have a Tuesday off work and are able to come shopping. Have a look at the pomegranates right here. All the different choices of them. And they also have the juice as well, which is really nice. Lots of leaf vegetables. Now the only thing 
that's probably different at this market compared to a lot of others is they don't necessarily have the prices on everything and generally they just quote them to you when you ask how much something is all the different very nice fruits and vegetables of course we have to have the staple things like potatoes and carrots that's very normal and then all of the pickled vegetables as well so you can get all sorts of different olives mushrooms the gherkins right there pickled cabbage you can get pretty much anything pickled in russia i think safely somebody has come up with every possible version of pickled vegetables my favorite is the mushrooms there's also some different oils and you can get them in jars at the same time as well a lot of this is unlabeled because mostly it's homemade if that's the right expression i always wonder when there's this many stands how they all make money but of course there is enough people coming here seven days a week from morning till night and not everybody is shopping in the few minutes that i'm making a video there's some cured meats here as well lots of different types and this is all by weight so you just let them know how many grams that you want and you're good pineapples i think mahapes from costa rica that's normally where they come from all of the smoked meats i wonder if they've got some exotic meats as well here perhaps they do it does look as i'm walking around like everything is repeated and it really is and a lot of people who will come here will have a favorite vendor that they'd come to these are all different people with different stands have a look at how many different types of meats and salamis that you can get there's also salo here as well and all kinds of different cured meats and different animals as well you can actually see here they have horse and then there is a rabbit there is i don't know what this animal is <laughs> a beaver is it a beaver there's also bear also now don't perhaps jump in the comments very quickly this is very typical for russian markets i think perhaps this place has even more choices than a lot of the local markets the one where i live i'll compare it all the time because we go there literally daily to buy things and the amount of choices is just you know amazing even for the place where i live 50 kilometers from moscow have a look at the pomegranates there they actually always have them open and cut so you can see what the different seasonal ones look like and then again more vegetables and fruits and then you can also see here now there's actually a delicatessen here with cheeses and all the cheese vendors are kept together so when you walk around everything is by different types of food there's also lots of different cottage cheeses as well and it comes in different forms so if you want it in liquid type or if you want it sliceable like you see now if you're ever wondering are people in russia hungry i think this is the worst place to come to to give you that example now a rinok in its raw form is very typical in russia every town no matter where you are in the entire country will have a market of course some will have more or less stands and vendors but somewhere like this closer to the center of moscow is for people that live in this immediate area you know i wouldn't travel two hours from where i live to come to this market when i can walk no more than 10 minutes to two different markets that's immediately in my town if i went to the next town there's a market again and so on all the way across russia they've got some different olives here also and different oils I'm not too sure what these 
orange balls are. They're the different types of cheese. And again, every possible fruit you can imagine. Even different types of bananas as well. Quite often when you come to different markets like this, the staff and the vendors are not particularly welcoming of people with cameras and me speaking in English. However, today it's not really a problem. It's a little bit quieter being that it's the mid-afternoon time and some of them run away a little bit when I point the camera at them. It's not really a problem. Not all of them want to be on camera and I understand that. So if you see people staring, take it for what it is. Somebody needs to let me know in the comments. I think the name for a fish seller is a fish monger, if that's the right word. And they have lots of different fresh fish here. Also some, I think that are partly frozen. They do have some tanks in the back as well with live fish. There isn't too many in the tanks. I was hoping to show more variety, but there's still more than enough here. And this is all by weight. And generally you'll buy the whole fish and pay whatever the weighted price is. You can see there some more fish in the tank at the back. And they've even got some different mussels. I think it's quite interesting how they've got the bottles of champagne, sea urchins, and they've got bags of them in the back there, which is pretty neat. So I don't know, are they live or are they just fresher when they're like that? Somebody needs to let me know if that's the right expression. And then all of the salmon. And I think they've even got some crawfish here as well. I'm just gonna go off topic for a second and show you this little small supermarket they've got called Sweet Lavka. And this place has lots and lots of imported drinks and snacks from all sorts of different countries in the world. You can actually see Coca-Cola from China there. I think they've even got Chinese Dr. Pepper, which is quite interesting. And these very big cans of Fanta also and all of the different products here are from different countries and if you're wondering how they possibly got here even sometimes I can't answer that question so let me know in the comments how is it that I can buy a bag of Maltesers that are from England here in Russia there's actually a lot of British products on these few shelves you'll see here lion bars I think the Kit Kats are from Germany. And then they also have Hershey chocolate down the bottom there. And then even lots of different types of chewing gum, <laughs> which is really interesting. How many types of Skittles did they make? I didn't even know there was this many. And then they've actually got quite a lot of Asian foods and different snacks. You can get the giant tub of Nutella if you want. These are from England, wagon wheels. And I think there is more Maltesers over here. Have a look at this. Wow. And then again, just purely imported items. So there is not anything here that is a Russian at all. It's all foreign products. They have a rack here with Coca-Cola, even from the boxes. Always curious where a lot of these things come from and how they get to Russia. So someone let me know in the comments, how can I buy 20 different types of Arizona iced tea? And then from Logan Paul, we can get Prime in Russia. There's actually shops in Australia where you can't even get it and then it's here in Russia. And have a look all the way from Australia, they have Bundaberg ginger ale and all the different flavors of it at the same time. Schweppes, which left Russia. And then all of the flavors of Dr. Pepper. There's even A&W root beer there also. But how is it possible? Two and a half years after things weren't available, they're sitting right on the shelf here in Moscow. 
before I walk on out of Sweet Lavka, I just want to show you, I think they've maybe got the largest Haribo collection I've ever seen. And Haribo is a very well-known European brand. They have a factory in almost every country. And it's almost impossible to know where they're all made from. If you were to read the back of the packaging, it'll be a separate place. And the one thing that I didn't notice as I was walking in earlier, they actually have Mr. Beast chocolate bars. Now he's by a long way the most popular YouTuber in the whole world, 200 million subscribers. And I can buy one of his chocolate bars now. It isn't cheap, I'll completely admit that. However, <laughs> in Moscow, I can get a Mr. Beast bar just by walking into this market. Let's have a little bit more of a look around. And then I wanna show you some of the actual food stands and what they have. There's some very different fruits here. These small finger bananas are quite unique. And then some dried leaves. There's a small artisan bakery here as well. I think perhaps maybe they make their own bread off site somewhere, then bring it here. And then again, more fruit vendors. On the outside ring of the market, they've got all sorts of different food vendors and takeaway food. And they've got even the fresh made bread right here. And then there's these little small cafes as you walk around. And all of them have different food from different countries and different regions and different types of food. And actually, I think the food market side of this place is probably more popular than the fruit and vegetable side of it because of how unique a lot of the different food vendors are. And they've got lots of very tasty food. Now, I will be actually stopping and doing a taste testing at one of the cafes. I just need to find it at the same time. <laughs> I know it's in here. It's just where I think they have some Vietnamese food here as well. And you can get noodles. There is more meat vendors with all the different dried and cured meats. Is this a duck? Cellar, I think it is. <laughs> and then they've got, I think maybe, is this a Philippines or Vietnamese place also? There is literally a different country represented at all of the different markets as you walk around. Now the one that I want to go to I just have to find it, a Jerusalem market called the Hummus. And you can see now, lots of people making their way in, trying to find something delicious. There's a pasta stand as well. And pretty much all the places that you come to here make everything el dente or literally on the spot. They don't have anything prepared. So you literally order what you want and they cook it for you right on the, on the hot plate right there in the back. There are also lots of different cake and pastry stands and lots of very tasty snacks that you can have. Even if you just wanna come here for coffee and cake, you can do that. And it's just a matter of finding the favorite food of the day that you might like. More pastries. These look like quiche. I wonder if they are. They look awfully like that. And then these bakery items here with the meat in the pastry. Has that got a name? I'm not sure. 
Looks very tasty though. Maybe it's a French type of dish. There is more meats. I think this place perhaps does some tasting plates. I haven't been here for a while to walk around, so it's very hard to understand the different things that I'm looking at. Also looks like someone else is making a TV show. <laughs> kind of like what I'm doing. Let me see if I can scooch by them. Jacket potato. They've actually got in English and in Chinese as well, which is interesting. This lady perhaps might be well known or famous. Somebody can let me know. I'll just get out of their way here. Have a look at how many people are making the video. Well, I'm really not sure who this lady is, but I imagine she must be famous in some form <laughs> because she's getting quite a crowd of people and she's doing tasting at some of the different stands as well. And the one she stopped at here is called United Kitchen. And I'm not too sure. It's very interesting because a lot of the dishes on the signs are all Western dishes. So I wonder if it might be new or something different. Super interesting. I come to make my own video and somebody's trying to replicate my concept and idea. Looks like they've got a sushi stand right here also. And they do the sushi literally right on the counter in front of you, which is very nice. So they have Casablanca on their stand and looks like some very tasty food. A lot of these are actually the display plates and then they cook it in the back there. And it's literally just stand after stand of different types of food. Looks like another artisan bakery with lots of cakes and treats. And have a look at the size of the loaves of bread. That's, do they even have an oven that big? They do also have a couple of very small dine-in cafes as well here. And I think this one actually is more of a wine bar than somewhere where you'd have food at. And there's some upstairs areas. And I noticed this when I first walked in. There is Jamie Oliver Cookery School on the upstairs level. And that's super interesting. And it looks like they've got a kitchen up there where they're training the staff and obviously doing cookery of some kind. There's also a small pizza place here as well. So there is literally food for any palate. If anybody can tell me anything more about the Jamie Oliver cooking school, I'd be very curious to know about it. Maybe I just need to just Google it myself and if he's still involved because his name is right up there on the sign. So it's very interesting that despite all of the changes in the last couple of years that his name is right there on the outside of the windows of the kitchens. So it turns out the lady here is making a show about different foods here in the market and it's actually on the first channel of Russia and they're doing some food tasting and there's a lot of people <laughs> here for this event. There's so many people filming and then all of the staff that are here with her. There must be about 30 people that have come along with her at the same time. And perhaps she is a well-known chef or culinary expert here in Russia. If you can let me know in the comments, that would be very nice. Hopefully I've saved the best to last. And if you are listening carefully, I was gonna do a little bit of a extra fun part at the end and I'm gonna do some food tasting and there's a place here called Chowder and Pie and this is actually owned by an Australian guy who's living here in Russia. Now he's not here today which is a bit of a shame but he's got homemade meat pies which are incredibly Australian. He also has the Bundaberg ginger ale as well and then he does actually have a menu with some Russian food on there also from Japan. Now the chowder part is the soups here, which are very much similar to the Boston chowders. 
and then have a look. The Australian flag, and then there's some different meat pies. I'm gonna go for the classic one with cheese, and we're gonna be able to sit down and do a food tasting. It's really interesting, they've got this huge fridge full of the Bundaberg drinks, and it's not very classic Australian to have a pie in Bundaberg, but I guess it's as Australian as they come. And this is what I'm gonna be having right here. The meat pie and tomato sauce, which is an Australian staple. They actually do make the pies right back here. There's a very small kitchen and they do other dishes as well. It looks like they serve coffee also. Lots of stuff here. They'll let me do a tasting of an Australian meat pie here in Moscow. Okay, so I thought I'd do a taste testing of the classic Aussie meat pie and Literally, these are actually baked right here. Very nice looking pie. Now, depending on where you get them in Australia, they're generally made in factories and they're not necessarily homemade unless you come to a smaller cafe or delicatessen. And the right way to eat it is with tomato sauce or ketchup, unfortunately. But in Australia, we call it tomato sauce because it's tomato sauce, literally. And the right way to eat it or to serve it with your pie is literally to get your finger, stick it in, and then you can actually pour it on your pie on the top. And then you actually rub it around like this. And although it may be not be ultra hygienic, this is how you should eat a pie and sauce. Now, the probably more traditional way to eat a pie and sauce is to be at the football or to be at a sporting event or somewhere where it's maybe a little bit cold like it is here in Moscow and you just take a bite of it. Mm. Now the more homemade it is, the more pastry that you get and the more flaky pastry as well. And this is very delicious. So very traditionally, it would be a meat pie and sauce, but this is a steak and cheese pie, which is, it's very delicious. And it gives me at least a little bit of home cooking here in Moscow. And to come to Danilovsky Market and to have an Australian pie, the actual owner of this place is Australian. I wish he was here today, but he's not. So thank you, Jay, for leaving a little bit of Australia here in Russia for me. I'm not exactly sure how that last clip turned out. I actually got the chef there to film me <laughs> and I can't see the screen. So I'm hoping that it's nice and centered. If it's not, it's still good. The actual pie is very delicious. The steak and cheese pie, particularly. I have actually had the classic meat pie there as well. And the steak and cheese one is just delicious. It does definitely have that homemade feel to it. It's not produced in a factory somewhere and mass produced. That's what I like about them. And even in Australia, it's a bit hard to find the homemade style pies in shops, especially if you go to a supermarket for certain they're not homemade. So I hope you like that little food tasting of an Australian cafe here in Moscow. I think it's the only one that I'm aware of. If somebody is from Moscow and knows about other places, let me know in the comments, please. And I'm definitely gonna go there and test it out. I think as I walk around this place, it's very hard to get a idea of how big it is. Now, in terms of a supermarket, it's equivalent to what would be the size of a hypermarket. It's not huge. There's probably about a hundred different vendors here, if you count them all up. And then the food cafes, there's probably about 30, maybe 35 different ones. And because it's in a round configuration, it's a little bit hard to show it on video properly, the sheer size of the place. You know, while I've been here, lots of people eating food because it's now a little bit later in the afternoon people coming here for dinner or just for something to eat. And then the shoppers that are at the market, there's not that many. Now, I would imagine most people who come here 
would live fairly local and don't make a trip across Moscow to come to this market. Perhaps some people do, but it's not as normal purely because there are so many of these different types of Rinux. You can see here also the dried fruits. And they always have the plates, these plates and bowls at the back. And we actually have some of them at home. I've even took some to my mum as well. And she has some in Australia. I don't think I noticed this when I walked around previously. They've got some people selling eggs here and different types of eggs as well. Is there really that many choices of them? Perhaps there are. And fresh chicken. And I think also maybe some turkey as well. These are those very small eggs that I showed in my butter video, if you might remember. So you can actually come here specifically to a vendor that's only got chicken or meat or cheese and all of the cured meats. And again, beautiful fruits, no matter the season. They almost don't look real now, I know they are. However, the way that they're displayed, it's intended that you know, you're not picking and poking at them. So they're as fresh and as beautiful as they look on the shelf. I thought I'd just quickly come upstairs to this upper level where this Jamie Oliver cookery school is. And you can actually get a good view of the whole market from here. And this amazing ceiling. And then all of the different vendors as you walk around. I think we pretty much covered most of them along with doing the tasting at my Australian cafe. And if Jamie Oliver is watching, let me know in the comments. But it's really interesting. They've actually got some girls back here and it looks like a chef that's helping them learn how to cook in some form. I'm really still confused what they do here because the place where you walk in is called Williams Oliver, not Jamie Oliver. And it looks like it's an extension of the kitchen and perhaps you can order food or you can just learn how to cook. I'm not entirely sure, but it's really interesting. It's really nice and cozy up here too. Nice spot to come and have something to eat. I was going to do my ending outside, but it's very dark. So I thought I'd just do it here. Thanks everybody for watching. I hope you found this video interesting and to see what a Russian typical food market looks like. And I'll keep saying the word typical because I can go to any city in Russia and come to a market like this, perhaps a little bit smaller, maybe even a little bit bigger. There's bigger markets in Moscow than this one as well. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. That'll be very nice. Post a comment. Perhaps you've been to this market before. Perhaps you've had an Australian pie even. I don't know if you've had one. How did it taste? If you want to follow me on Telegram, the link to my channel is right here. I did actually post a few photos from here today and it's always interesting to see what I'm doing on a daily basis. And if you want to see an old video, click this link and you can keep traveling with Russell. Okay, everybody, I'm off on another adventure. Bye.